Hey folks, Kiltman here, Kiltman at your services. How are you all? I hope you're all doing very, very well. Now, yeah, if you look just there, we've got a lens flare. JJ Abrams, eat your fucking heart out. We have lens flares. Now, in my previous video, there was a little, there was a guest. There was a newcomer, a new kid on the block. And I made reference to him. He was sitting up behind there somewhere. And of course, I knew, I knew straight away that the floodgates would open. So yes, I've been messaged many times. What is that new mask? Is it a mask? Is it a prop? What is it? Wow, it's great. Can you talk us through it? Of course, your wish is my command. So now we shall enter into a very strange kettle of fish. Well, I show you. <laughs> it is Piranha Head, Mutant Piranha Head, sitting on the box of a bottle of um, Shabbat Regal whiskey. Um, there he is. This is what he, this is what the guy is. He's a great big sort of mutant nightmarish piranha. I mean, piranhas are pretty nightmarish to begin with, aren't they? But you know, them teeth and the fact they can strip, strip a man to the, the bone within 30 seconds. I know women who can do it in less than that. But there he is. Now, there ain't a great deal to say about this, I'll be honest. Um, it is a mask, uh, but I didn't buy him as a mask. I don't buy any masks to wear as masks, really. They're all masks that uh, to be displayed, just to be put in the background of videos, but to dot around the Kilt Mansion to add a bit of, you know, colour and variety and mystery and menace. As if I can't do that enough on my own. But that's why I get the mask. And I thought, I love them anyway. But this, I just saw it, I thought, oh, you know what? I haven't bought a mask for ages. Let's see what masks are on offer. And I saw this. Didn't expect the classical uh, embellishment there. I'm playing the great score to 1978's Piranha, um, Joe Dante's Piranha, with Barbara Steele, Bradford Dillman, and oh, the wonderful Belinda Belaski, who I adored in this and in The Howling as well. Another Joe Dante movie. Uh, this is Pino Donaggio's score. So, you know, I tie these things in as best I can, you know? But yeah, now he's not like the piranhas that are in the 1978 piranha, nor is he really like what's in the, is it 2010 Piranha 3D, which are a bit even more bigger, grotesque, more colorful and more mutated. But he clearly is a piranha type thing, colorful and mutated. All that's missing really is a bit more razor teeth, perhaps, and maybe a bit more of a jutting lower jaw, a bit more of the uh, that underbite, that famous piranha underbite. But look at the colours on that bastard. Wicked greens, purples, lilacs, blues, yellows. You know, there's, there's tons. Now, Creepy Party made this, and they are cheap masks, they are. I've actually got quite a few of theirs, and I... Right now, cannot think of any of the other ones off the top of my head, but um, but there are plenty, and I have reviewed them as well. But they make very, it's flimsy latex. We're not talking Trick or Treat Studios here. We're not talking Ghoulish Productions, all of which I've covered in the past many times. But they are interesting designs, very beautifully painted. They are good sculpts. They come folded in a, in a box. A, yeah, I'm gonna show you the box it came in, right? That came in that. Little box, little box. That box comes within another box, but either way, that is inside that little cardboard coffin. So in other words, it's scrunched down to hell and back and folded and folded and you think, oh my God. Now, if that was a trick or treats mask, that would, it would take you a while to heat that up and to fill it out and pad it out and get the shape back into it. But these things, they just go whack and boom, it's there. It's back in shape. So look at this guy. And what Creepy Party do, um, which I noticed in some of the other masks that I've got of theirs, is 
these beautiful eyes, which I don't know if you can really see that. Obviously, you're getting the, that pesky ring light. It's now su supplying a little iris of its own, a little halo in the middle. But um, they, they are, they're glass or plastic, but glassy, very clear, very sharp and shiny. And they give life and sentience to, to the, the mask. And that, that really, really adds. Obviously, if you're gonna wear it as a mask, oh yeah, the eye holes are there, somewhat there. I've got some uh, some bubble wrap in there as well, because otherwise it'd be sitting on a Shabazz Regal box and there'd be big points of the corners of the box sticking out of it. But there's his tail, nice and colorful again at the end there. There's a bit of a sort of Lovecraftian feel to him, a bit of, does this, sit on the end of one of Great Cthulhu's tentacles, maybe? Does Great Cthulhu fart these out into the deep briny? And they go up to Innsmouth and rake havoc. But look at that, look at the colors on that. And you think, oh, kilt man, that's a cheap shit mask. It's cheap, it's not shit. It is a mask though. But so two, two out of three things were correct there. But look at that, look at it. So if you're gonna wear it, it looks all right. You know, if you're gonna put it as a prop in the background of your videos on YouTube, it looks great. You're gonna just sit it somewhere. Like maybe you've got a fish tank, maybe sit it behind the fish tank and put some little lights on it. It'd scare the crap out of the fish you've got there. You know, your little loach who's going around the bottom, you know, sand feeding, you know. <laughs> And you see this thing behind it, whoa, Christ almighty. You know, if you go to a, a public lavatory and you look in, look in the bowl and you see this there, don't sit down. Take it from me, don't sit down. But the sculpt is good. The paint work is great. I bought this from Amazon for 15 pounds. I think it was 15 pounds. I said it wasn't any more than that. I, um, you mass collectors out there, all I can say is, it's worth it. You worth it? Get off. I can shave myself. I don't need your razor tipped fangs to do the job for me. Look at his angry furrowed brow. Look at his angry. He's hungry. You know. What are you saying? What? Put it on. Wear, wear it as a mask. No. No, I'm not. You see, when I want to plunge my face into something fishy, you guys aren't gonna see it. I ain't filming that. Oh, Kiltman, you dragged your channel down to that level. Yes, I did. I dredged the bottom of the uh, the, the irradiated riverbed. Because isn't that where they sprung from in Joe Dante's Piranha? Which is a great movie, by the way. It, it's it's comical, it's, it's grisly. It's certainly got a fair bit of gore in it, and it is frightening as well. And yes, it's a, an offshoot of Jaws, of course, but you know, it, it is its own story. And the great genre icon, Barbara Steele, Barbara Steele, playing some horrible military scientist. Yeah, you know. But Bradford Dillman as the ecologically aware savior hero who does get, he makes a self-sacrificial descent into the, you know, the river and he's getting chomped to bits by these little <laughs> they're, just, they're just shaking him about like uh, but it does look good and you see lots of flesh being ripped off bones there was a sequel piranha 2 the spawning who made that james cameron oh yes but look at this guy it's great isn't it it's great it's big fat bloated obviously clearly a piranha is a lot thinner than that. But as I say, I've got this big box in there and it gives him a bit more of a demonic, almost human shaped head, I suppose. Give a bit more girth to it. But, <laughs> actually, you know, I don't know why you're snarling at me. I, I like you. I liberated you. I brought you home. Please be kind. Look in the mouth, look at the fangs. As I say, you know, if you're gonna be more specifically piranery, There'd be a lot more fangs there and they'd be far more razor edged 
which is what they're like. But that's still pretty damn good. Look, 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 yeah, look. What? You've got to learn to enunciate your words a bit better than that. But it's great, and I love the twist in the tail as well. A twist in the tail. Was I not the one that wrote volumes one and two of Twisted Tales? Yes, forsooth indeed it was I. Folks, I am seriously considering going back into writing uh, horror fiction, fantasy fiction, bizarre fiction, darko fiction, you know? Um, if you can find my first two anthologies, Twisted, uh, Twisted Tales volumes one and two, good luck to you. They came, they went. That was it, that was it. But that was a good, what, three decades ago? A couple of decades, certainly a couple of de decades ago. So, you know, I need to try to get back, back into that. But, see how I started talking seriously and I, I became tongue-tied because that's important, that's serious. And suddenly, my tongue just couldn't do it. <laughs> so, but folks, yeah, if you want to get one of these, I got mine from Amazon. How apt is that? Getting a piranha from the Amazon where they proliferate. There you go. You see? It all comes together, doesn't it? You know? But look again, look at those eyes. Look, at, I don't know if you can pick that up, but the glistening on those eyes really gives it this vibrancy, this sort of this life, this danger. I love it. I think it's great. I didn't buy it as a mask, I bought it as a prop. I bought it because I thought, hey, that looks great. I'll have one of them. And very often buying things on a whim or a fin uh, works a treat. So, you know, if you get that edge, you know, I like that. Oh, should I? Oh, God. Well, if you've got the readily disposable spondulies, then yeah, take the plunge. Plunge? Again, how many more nautical terms can I can I imbue this video with? I don't know, I'm all at sea with this. Out of my depth, you could say. But yeah, so folks, uh, because people have asked about it, I just wanted them to sit in the background a couple of times and like, you know, just to a bit add a bit of colour in the background. But people have spotted him and gone, like, oh no, 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 you mentioned him, now you've got to discuss him. Creepy party. Piranha head mask, right? That's what you look for. Ain't too hard to find, um, but well worth it. And you can wear it and it will look effective. So I've got to say, massive uh, thumbs up to Creepy Party because their masks may be cheap, but they're great, they're inventive, they're colorful. They do a lot of animal head masks and they are good, you know, so, you know, don't be like, no, no, that's just poverty row bullshit. No. If you want to pay your 60, 70, 80 to 90 to beyond for your trick or treat studio masks, which often come out shite and certainly not what you expected because they look nothing like the paintwork and the artwork and the sculpt that's on their advertising blurb. And what you get is crushed beyond belief and the paintwork is nowhere near what it should be. It's happened a lot. Don't deny it. I've got loads, loads of trick-or-treat masks. Most of which are great, but some, no, they're not so great. So you just gotta, you know, you pay your money, you take your chance. But all I can say is that out of about maybe tops, five, maybe six creepy party masks, they've all been good. And I know I can't remember what the other ones are. There's a there's a big witch, there's another demon thing, there's all there's a, a clown thing. I've, I've got a load of these and they've all been good. So your cheapo sort of places can still come up with the goods. That looks fucking boss to me. If I saw that coming towards me, I know the first bit of my body which would be, which would be out of the water. And so do you, I know, because it's very bite-sized. Um, but yeah, look at it, oh. Bobbing along, bobbing along, bobbing along on the bottom with the beautiful briny sea. That 
was a little uh, tribute there to Angela Lansbury. Didn't expect that from a piranha head mask video, did you? No. But yeah, folks, so yeah, uh, you can, because these bits are hollow, you could put stuff in there, little bits of paper to, to make them a bit more solidified, a bit more rigid. I have, because believe you me, when I unwrapped this and it unfolded, it went pretty much into shape. But I thought, oh, it's a bit sunken there. So that's why I put the bubble wrap in there. And also, you want to try to get some firm, firmness to the upper jaw and firmness to the lower jaw. So you just shove some bits down there. It ain't rocket science and it ain't difficult to do. And all of a sudden, you've got this. Should you want this, obviously. But I recommend it. If you didn't see your masks, it's, it's actually oh, oh, just colourful props, monstrous props. It's a dot around your house, you know, have fun on Halloween or whatever. You know, it's perfect. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing um, the, the Guernsey fisherman's jersey. That's not a play on words, but I do find that quite amusing. In Jaws, Quint wears this in one scene, when he fit, when, where he's first introduced to, uh, to Hooper. And uh, he's wearing this and an apron, and they're in Quint's shark fishing emporium. There's Jaws everywhere, literally Jaws. Every single part of the, the dwelling is festooned with them. And, uh, but it's a fisherman's jersey, but it's called a Guernsey jersey. Now, in the UK, or rather part of the UK, but rather next door to France, we have something called the Channel Islands, two of which are Jersey, which is the biggest, and Guernsey. And it's a, it's a fisherman's Jersey, but it's called a Guernsey Jersey. See? Education as well. But I, I find that quite amusing, that it's, a, it's the two islands, it's two of the islands in the Channel Islands. I like that. Anyway, so there you go. I've been fishing. I caught this. You too can catch this from Amazon and probably other mask outlets and what have you. You know, it's there, it's there. Isn't it great? Look at the colours. The colours are sensational. No need to touch them up. They're great. No need to rehaul it. You do. Well, I'm going to refin this one. No, I'm going to put the shreds of flesh. No, but do whatever you want. Jaw mask, you buy it. Your prop, you buy it. You do whatever you want with it. It's up to you. I don't dictate. I, I'm going to do nothing with this apart from shove it. Shove it right good and hard. Wrapped in, filled with bubble wrap on top of a Shibas Regal box. That's what I've done with it. And I think it looks bloody spectacular. Me likey. No bitey. Please, no bitey. I said no bitey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Easily tamed, aren't they? Easily tamed. Right, over you go. So folks, I caught this as well in my nets. Hmm. So please, folks, in the meantime, on the, this ever fishy, briny, amphibious, bitey, bitey in between time, please keep it cutting, keep it counting. And I am gonna see you all Shortly, with something else. <laughs> Don't stick your bits in that mouth. They do nip just a little bit, I've noticed. <laughs>